Thanks for joining us here on this uh, first online-only church service for uh, Lenten midweek. Um, this is new territory for us, and we're still trying to figure out exactly how this works and what we can do and uh, all that sort of thing. So, so I appreciate you tuning in, being here, watching the video, um, and uh, continuing this Lenten journey that we, we've already started for the past few weeks. Uh, we don't want to let that fall. We don't want to drop it. Uh, we want to keep that going and, and keep the momentum that we've built up during Lent uh, as we continue our journey towards the cross. So thanks for being here. So I've heard some loud noises in my life, right? As I imagine you probably have too. Um, you know, I have a s times when you know, things are quiet and it's nice and peaceful and then all of a sudden out of the blue, bang! Uh, you know, and it makes you, it shocks you, it makes you turn and look. You know, I, I, I live with a two-year-old and a five-year-old. That happens all the time to me. That's, that's every day. Uh, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about too, where uh, things just, just overwhelm you with their sound. And it comes out of nowhere. I think that describes our Bible text today. We have this, this reading, and I'll read it for you. Uh, it, it continues uh, looking at these, the, the miracles of Lent. And this is from Matthew chapter 27, verses 51 to 52. It reads, And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened. And today, we want to talk about those splitting rocks, the miracle of the splitting rocks, which you normally wouldn't think of as, as being a Lenten miracle, right, uh, in terms of, you know, really kind of low miracles to really great miracles, that, the, a few rocks breaking, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. But it all adds in to this Lenten miracle package that we're looking at, this, this uh, culmination of things that happen at Christ's death. You know, we've talked about the, the splitting of the temple curtain. We talk about the, the earthquake, the rumbling uh, of the earth itself. And I think that today's, the splitting of the rocks, it, it kind of goes with that. You know, when I think about this, I, I like to think of, imagine, the, the, the rocks that are there just kind of popping like bubbles. Um, just something inside of them where they get to that point that they can't take it. Like, like they've bottled up their emotions and, and it, it builds and it builds and it builds to the, the point where they just explode from inside. They always tell you not to bottle it up inside, right? Uh, never to let your emotions well up to the point where uh, they're trapped in that bottle and they just get fuller and fuller and fuller and all of a sudden the bottle's gonna burst, right? Have you ever been at that point? Have you ever gotten to that place where, where all of a sudden you just can't take it? That's what happens today. And we don't know how this happened or why or even you know much of what it was like. I read you the detail, it wasn't a whole lot. But I think that same thing that leads the earth to quake leads the very rocks to explode. And that must have been, it must have been crazy to, to be there and, and to, to hear this because I can only imagine how loud an exploding rock would be. And not just one, uh, you know, this is, this is multiple rocks. Uh, who knows, could have been thousands of rocks that, that all exploded. And why? You know, what a weird kind of miracle, I think, for, for God to perform, right? Uh, why, why in the world would he, he choose that? And I think it, it kind of goes to creation, right? When, when the fall happens, Back in the book of Genesis, uh, we know that, that the sin of Adam and Eve, it infects creation. You know, that sin, it doesn't just hit Adam and Eve. Uh, it, it affects everything around them, everything that they were supposed to care for, the animals, uh, the land, the plants, everything, everything God had made in creation. And, and I've always, I don't know, I've always been kind of amazed by that. Because, because you know, Adam and Eve sinning uh, and receiving you know, the, the punishment and the consequences, that, that makes sense. But the very earth 
that Adam is, is set to, to uh, work for food and, and labor, that everything around them is also affected by the sin that they bring into the world. And today, I think we have echoes of that in these exploding rocks. You know, I think those rocks that were affected by the sin of the fall, in the same way they're there and they, they see Christ crucified, they feel Jesus, the Son of God, God himself being crucified on the cross, God suffering death. And I think there, there's something that is just incompatible with this world in that. Something that, that is so, so not the way it was ever supposed to be that these rocks, they just pop. They can't take it anymore. They, for, for hours, they've watched Jesus uh, suffer and die on the cross. And then when he passes, they blow. The very death of God is so incompatible with everything about creation that they just cease to be rocks. Maybe, right? I guess if, if rocks explode, they, they turn into little rocks. They're still rocks, I guess, but, but they're not the same anymore. And maybe that's, that's, a, that's a good way to look at it. This world is not the same. When Christ suffered on the cross, when he died on the cross, this world changed. It wasn't the same world that was there just moments ago. Now this was a world that had been atoned for. The sin of the world had been wiped clean. No longer did it call out for the blood of mankind that had, had sinned against it. Now the blood of Christ had fulfilled that demand. And the rocks just can't take it. Maybe you're getting to that point too. You know, we've been, been under a, a national emergency for about a week now, I guess. A state emergency for even longer than that. You know, restaurants just closed down a few days ago. Um, you know, and who knows what's coming now. Uh, the governor's out there making uh, announcements that, that more things could be coming. Um, and some of you have probably been in your house this whole time, you know, locked up, staying safe, but you're probably getting to the point where you just want to go somewhere. And I know I I'm kind of feel it a little bit that way, just based on the, the lack of human interaction. I, I've seen a handful of people over the past few days. So right now, we need to figure out how to deal with those emotions those bottled up emotions. What do we do with them? Because we don't really want to end up like the rocks, right? We, we don't want to get to the point where we're, pow, we just explode. So what do you do with that? What do you do with all the anxiety uh, uh, against the world as it is today with all the anxiety of the coronavirus and you know the fears of when's it gonna stop? How big's it gonna get? Is it gonna, is it going to keep on going to the point where, um, you know, we're not even going to be able to leave our houses? You know, will it mutate and become even worse? You know, we don't know the answer to any of these questions. Right? Only, only time will tell. Only God knows. But one thing we know is that even through these times of uncertainty, God is with us. He's always going to be with us. Um, even when we're trapped alone in our houses. Even when our human interaction has been limited, God is always there. You know, God promises to be with us whenever two or three are gathered in his name. But I don't think that means that he's not there when we're alone. Right? How, how, how terrible would that be? Um, that's not how it works. That's not the God that we have. We have a God who promises to be there with us through thick and thin. A God who promises never to abandon, never to forsake us. When the world seems so distant, feels so distant, 
Know that you're not alone. That God is always there with you. And we have this community too. This community, this online community, this online church community that's kind of new and, and different and we're, we're still figuring it all out, right? But there's something here. There's something beneficial about being able to connect together even when we can't get together. We're never alone because Jesus is there with us. Jesus in our heart, his blood poured into our very hearts as we read about last Sunday. Christ is with us in spirit and truth, physically even, as we come to, to be with him at the Lord's Supper, to, to join with his body and blood. And there's a reason why we get to do that. It's because of God's love, it's because of God's grace. If you don't love someone, you don't want to be with them. And the, the, the vast distances that God has gone to be with his people, it's incredible. And it shows us undeniably God's love is greater than we could ever imagine. There is one thing that can separate us from God. Contrary to Romans chapter 8, there is one thing that can separate us from God. You know what that is? It's, it's us. Right? Nothing can forcibly do it to us. That's Paul's encouragement in Romans 8. But the one thing that he doesn't uh, clue you in on there is that you can walk away from God. And we don't want to do that, right? That's sin. What, what's the definition of sin? Sin is anything that goes against God's will. And God's will is that we connect with him, that he connects with us, that, that we are together in his love forever, for all of eternity. And anytime we push him away, when we pursue sinful desires, sinful goals, rather than, than pursue his will, we are driving that wedge between us. We are walking away from the Lord. We don't want that. See, God has, he has proven his love for us, even while we were sinners. Yeah, I'll read you a, a scripture first. Um, this is from uh, 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. It says, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Those words probably sound very familiar from our liturgy. Right? And we, we love those words. We say them all the time because we want to remember that sin drives us away from God. And the car is full. Really? My memory card's full. I gotta stop talking. Don't you wish that that's how it worked on a Sunday morning? That when the memory card's full, the sermon's over? <sighs> that's okay. We can uh, keep going here with the uh, secondary camera. Uh, we'll just go handheld and I'll, I'll walk around and we'll talk. Sin separates us from God. It, it drives that wedge between us and him. And we don't want that, right? We don't want to do that to ourselves. If nothing else can separate us from God, if nothing can snatch us out of his hand, why would we willingly do that to ourselves? It doesn't make any sense. Christ died on the cross to forgive us our sins. And thank God that he did. Because God set up this, this system of, uh, of perfection. It's a bar of perfection. Once we've sinned, uh, you know, it's over for us. Without God's forgiveness, we're lost. But thanks be to God, we're, we're not lost because he sent Jesus to be our Savior, to be there for us. You know, I'll read you another uh, Bible verse. This is from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. It's through Christ's blood that we're saved. It's through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. You know, had he not gone to the cross, had he not made those, those rocks to explode, we'd be lost in our sin. We don't want to be lost in our sin. Absolutely not. You know, we have, we have a, a God who, who gives us so much, who promises us eternal life and forgiveness of sins. We don't want to risk that. We don't want to drive that wedge between us and God to, to walk away from Him, to separate ourselves from our Lord. Be with God. And I know how that sounds right now you know, at a time where you know, they're telling you not to be with anybody. Right? We can't be here together in the church. You can't be with your friends. You can't even go to a movie. Right? But you can always be with God. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter what we're doing. God's there with us. And this is the the brilliance of God's plan. That it doesn't rely on us. You know, thank thank God it doesn't. Because we just we just find a way to mess it up, right? Thanks be to God that He has put a plan in place that is stronger than our desire to walk off, that our, our tendency to, to run from him. Jesus died on the cross to forgive your sins because God loves you. Don't ever forget that. Even when you feel alone, even when uh, the, the world around you feels a hundred miles away, never forget that God's there for you. He's there with you. There is no quarantine from God. The only thing that could quarantine us from God would be our sin, and Christ has taken care of that. He shed his blood so that we wouldn't have to be locked away, so that we could have access to the Father, just like like the, the tearing of the temple, uh, the temple curtain symbolized for us. No longer was there a divider between God and man. Now man has direct access to God. And I know I mean, it's, it's been a crazy Lenten season, right? Uh, I was joking around the other day that I, I gave up meeting together as a church for Lent. <laughs> uh, bad joke, I'm sorry. No, I, not even funny. The splitting of the rocks was a sign of how much God loves us. It's a sign that creation would not tolerate the death of the Son of God. We're not going to tolerate that either. As a church, we we feel that same rebellious explosion that the rocks did. Because we know it's not right. We know that Jesus died for our sins, not his sins. And that's not fair for him. It's not fair for us. But how great is it that it's not fair? Because we don't don't want fair. Fair Fair is not good for us. We want grace. And our God is a God of grace and love, and there is no denying that. He let his only son suffer and die on the cross to show us how much he loves us. That's a miraculous Lenten miracle, if I've ever heard one. Our God loves you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always be with you. And I look forward to the day when we get to join together with you too. And we'll be back here in these pews. And we will rejoice giving thanks to God that we have weathered this storm and that he has brought his people through to the other side. Thanks be to God for all the miracles that he places in our lives. Amen.
And I know the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.